uh, let's actually go ahead and do something. Show that the one-dimensional momentum operator is Hermitian. Okay, so uh, we can, uh, momentum is immeasurable, so we want the things that we measure from momentum to be real numbers, which means that the operator associated with momentum has to be Hermitian. All right, so let's just show that. We want to show that the momentum operator and I think we said one dimensional, yeah, one dimensional momentum operator. This is a change from the previously posted slides. And let's say X is the one dimension. That momentum operator is Hermitian. Or oh, what is the momentum operator minus I H bar D by DX. So you want to show that this operator uh, is Hermitian. If it's Hermitian, that means that if we take, uh, say, some wave function psi m and we operate with the momentum operator on some wave function uh, character, uh, quantum number n, that is equal to the wave function operating on this wave function first, psi m, and again this is complex conjugate, times the wave function on that site. So if this relationship is true, then P is Hermitian. Well, for this, it might be useful to go back to the original notations. Let's go from minus infinity to infinity of psi m, just re changing notation, times Px. Let's put in what Px is. That's minus i h bar. And now we take the derivative of this uh, wave function, dx. And we're, this is one dimension, so we're going to integrate over all x. And since uh, we want to show, so we want to show this is the case, if we can show this is the case, then Px is Hermitian. So this is um, i, sorry, minus i h bar d psi m dx complex conjugate. So you take this complex conjugate times psi n, and we're going to integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity of dx. So I want to show this is true. All right, this you may recognize way back in calculus. Uh, oh, look, it's a function times the derivative of a function. Oh, remember integration by parts? Maybe you don't. So uh, let's look at this. Let's look at the integral of psi m star psi n integration by parts. That is equal to psi m or the integral, sorry, integration psi m star times d psi n dx by dx plus uh, psi n a d psi m dx by dx integral. So essentially what you do is you take the first derivative of this and multiply by that, sorry, that's a complex conjugate, <clears throat> and integrate over space. And then you do the uh, first derivative of this with respect to x and multiply by that, integrate over integrate. So this is in integration by parts. All right, this, oh, this is kind of interesting. You're taking the first derivative of a wave function. Oh, yeah. Okay, first derivative of a wave function. That's what you're doing here, first derivative of a wave function. All right, so let's uh, just rewrite this. Let's pull this over. So the integral of psi m star d psi n dx, that's just equal to, we'll subtract that over there. So it's just the integral of psi m star psi n minus the integral of psi n d psi m complex conjugate dx dx all right so let's go ahead and do that uh, first of all let's recognize that if um, you have an orthogonal basis set then psi m times psi n that's equal to zero if psi m star and psi n are orthogonal And if they're not orthogonal by the previous uh, parts of this lecture, 
uh, you can make them orthogonal. So you can always make vectors orthogonal. All right, so this means that you have the integral of psi m star d psi m dx. That's equal to minus the integral of psi n d psi m star dx. Okay, let's multiply both sides of this equation by minus i h bar. That's a constant. So let's uh, minus i h bar. And now since it's a constant, you can pull it inside the integral term. So now we can rewrite this as the integral of psi m star minus i h bar d psi n d, uh, dx integrator dx we'll do the same thing here we'll put put the the minus i h bar inside the integral sign so this will be the integral of psi n minus i h bar d psi m star dt uh, dx dx. All right, so far so good. Let's rewrite this as the integral of psi n. Uh, to put this, what we want is this whole thing to be um, complex conjugate. So right now we just have the complex conjugate of dm, but we want to put it outside. Why do we want to put it outside? Well, eventually what we want to do is to show that uh, this whole thing complex conjugate is equal. Okay. And I forgot the minus sign in front of here. Okay, I think that's right. That minus sign was still there. We'll just go ahead and check. Yeah, the minus sign was still there. So we put the minus ih bar inside. So what we do is we want to make the complex conjugate of this. The complex conjugate of this is you change i to minus i. So this will be um, i h bar d psi m star dx whole thing sorry um, let's make the whole thing now complex conjugate okay so to make put the complex conjugate in there you change i to minus i and that's equal to minus the integral of psi n now uh, let's put a minus 1 here, so we can put a minus i h bar d psi m dx complex conjugate. And that comes out to be the integral of psi n, oh, minus i h bar d psi m dx, the whole thing complex conjugate. Or in other words, let's rewrite this in Dirac notation psi m px psi n that's equal to we'll put this uh, this is a complex conjugate that should go on the left hand side this is px psi m psi n so by this exercise we've shown that the uh, operator denoted by uh, the momentum, one-dimensional momentum operator, is Hermitian because if you operate on psi n, it's the same thing as operating on psi m, where you have to be careful of what's complex conjugate. Remember, direct notation on the left is complex conjugate. All right, so that's interesting. So that means that if you have an operator that has a first derivative, you're going to have to put an i in front of it in order to have uh, the that operator which has the first derivative in order that operator to be Hermitian.